So, back for the semi-final team builder for the High Roller Draft League. I am very pleased to have made it this far. Just two more matches until there is some big money, hopefully. So, we have to go through one of the opponents I did lose to in the Swiss rounds. I am facing Jeremy Rodriguez, Serapis, once again with their colossal team uh, that I did, unfortunately, lose 2-1-2 previously. Uh, it was a quite a close game, and there was a move that I was debating on my Blastoise the, um, just before the match going into the match and if I would have had that move which I do have this time I would have won the, the third game but you know hopefully it's going to work out that I didn't use that in the previous set because now it should hopefully take them by surprise so Blastlix is still coming and it's got Terrain Pulse so Terrain Pulse was the way to hit Azumarill because you've got to bring Rillaboom to be able to deal with the Blastoise somewhat and then Terrain Pulse will then be able to hit Azumarill for super effective damage so it was a debate between Hydro Cannon and Terrain Pulse or Water Spout and Brine, and I went for the wrong option, it seems. At least for that set, it seems I went for the incorrect option. And now, of course, I will want Water Spout and Brine in this set, but that's how it goes. Uh, also was debating the fourth move for a little while. There's a couple of other moves that the Blastoise uh, could reasonably run. If I run any kind of status, I have access to Max Guard. I could just run Protect as well. Uh, but I may not be Dynamaxing the Blastoise this game. It's not just the ult like ultimate... Dynamax candidate for this game. I'm actually planning on Dynamax and the Crocodile mostly, but we will see how that goes. So Fake Out is there because hopefully I can just go for the Fake Outs into the support Pokemon, the Rillabooms, the Weaviles, uh, to stop any kind of cold, cold setup or anything like that, uh, stop any Aqua Jets. So that's what the Fake Out is mainly there for. Maybe I will miss having Max Guard, but we will see. Uh, I also have Grassy Seed instead of the Rindo Berry this time. So Rindo Berry is a good way of being able to take on the Rillaboom because I'm taking less damage. But Grassy Seeds also does that. I can take on the Rillaboom with the Grassy Seed. I can survive a Miracle Seed boosted drum solo while I max with the Grassy Seed boost. So I can still take on the Rillaboom well enough. I sacrifice Max Overgrowth from the Colossal so they can just bot me if they get that going. And they did have Solar Beam last time uh, over Earth Power. Maybe they're going to respect the Heat Trail a little bit more, which I'm not bringing this time. That would be ideal, but we will see. Uh, but yeah, Grassy Seed should be enough. And then it will let me take on the physical threats a lot better than just Rindo Berry would. Grassy Seed helps out against the Azumarill. Like, helps out against the Weavile and the Dragonite and all that stuff as well. So sacrificing a little bit more damage from the initial gra first Grassy Glide uh, and potential Max Overgrowth from the Colossal to be able to take on everything, hopefully, uh, significantly better. So we will see how that goes. Fable, I've dropped Helping Hand and I'm running Protect and I'm running a bit more defensive on this Clefable. It's still got the Power Herb Meteor Beam because that can still do some very reasonable damage uh, when I get that plus one going, but I'm going for Protect with the Clefable this time because I have the potential of going Executor and I want to be able to double Protect in the face of the Weavile. It didn't run Fate last time. I don't see a reason why it would switch to running Fate. Snarl made a lot of sense on the Weavile. I, if the Weavile comes, I don't really think it's going to change up its moveset, uh, so I will feel somewhat safe double protecting in front of it. We'll see if they just hard switch to Rillaboom, and then they can fake out on the, again on the next turn after I've already wasted my double protect, but we will see. Uh, but mainly just gone a bit more defensive so I can take on uh, some more of the hits. In the practice games that I did, the defensiveness of the Clefable was coming into play. I was living with just a little bit in the reds quite a few times in the practice game, so I'm content with going the bulky route instead. It can still do some very reasonable damage to the Scrafty. The Weavile's got the Sash anyway, so it doesn't matter that I'm not Okoing uh, the Weavile with the Moonblast, which I think I still am. I probably should do that calc uh, before we start, but I could just Meteor Beam the Weavile as well, and that definitely gets it. So just dropping Helping Hands, mainly just so that I can go for that double protect play uh, on the first turn. One of the things that Jeremy did say to me after the match was that they were expecting the Copper Raja, and looking back at the set, Copper Raja would have been amazing in that one. We will see how it potentially goes in this one, but because Jeremy was saying how good the Copper Raja was, don't get me wrong, he was correct. Copper Raja is actually pretty good in this matchup if Trick Room is up, but only if Trick Room is up, really. Uh, but if it is, then it could potentially sweep through the game. However, because Jeremy said... Copper Raja was probably the play, and it probably was the play. I want to try and avoid using the Copper Raja because he's going to be more prepared for it this time. Uh, so the Copper Raja is absolutely here in Team Preview. Try to psych him out to think, oh yeah, yeah, Jamie has listened to him. He's going with the Copper Raja route. I will go my anti Copper Raja and then get blown back by not Copper Raja. That is what I am hoping for. Uh, I am not planning on bringing Executor and Copper Raja in the first game depending on what the six uh, he has brought is. Maybe I do change up if he's gone like ultra hard trick room with no colossal or anything like 
you know that's not going to happen uh, but uh, if there is it, it, if there's a what the Pokemon I would expect to be I'm going with not Copperage and Exactor it's mainly here for team preview but is still very good in the matchup if necessary so if I need to get into Trick Room or I need to counter their own Trick Room Copperage can still do some very good things it is the regular Copperage instead of the G-Max version because Steel Spikes would definitely be more beneficial than the Steel Surge would be and then I've just got the coverage not the Iron Heads and High Horsepower, pretty much every Cop Barrage is going to have that for the defense boosts. And then Power Whip can Oko the Azumarill with that much attack investment. And it can survive a close combat from the Scrafty with that much defense investment as well. And that's not even in max with the Cop Barrage, so uh, that is quite nice here. And then if I get some Steel Spike boosts going, then I can take on a lot of Pokemon. We will see how the Cop Barrage goes, if it comes to the match even. Uh, I don't even know if it will, but we will see. It can do some good things if it's paired up with the Executor that can go for the Trick Room. Uh, so this is a slightly risky Executor. Tour. He went min speed Azumarill last time. He went min speed Azumarill. Executor underspeeds Azumarill if Executor is min speed. Uh, but also, he also went 45 speed on his Colossal uh, because doubled, oh no, quad, double, not doubled, quadrupled. That outspeds my whole team, including the Latios. But if you can see here, Executor is 45 speed. I do not want to speed tie with that. Also, it would speed tie with the Dust Noir. Amusingly, he sped tie, speed tied with his own Dust Noir and Colossal. So if he wanted to bulldoze in Trick Room, it was actually a speed tie. So uh, I am not playing around with that speed tie. I am hoping the Azumarill is still minimum speed. And if it is, Executor will always outspeed it. Out of the Trick Room, I will outspeed. Speed. In the Trick Room, Room Service will activate and I will outspeed the Azumarill. So, we will see how that goes if that comes into play. Even if the Executors um, come into the match, hopefully, if things go well, I am leaving the, the Cobaraja and the Executor on the bench, so we will see. Uh, but if I need to go my own hard Trick Room route, I can go Clefable Executor, follow me Trick Room, and then hopefully sweep with Copperaja. And with the room service, I will be able to underspeed that Azumarill and bop it with a wood hammer, which is what the attack EVs are for, and then just dumped defense again. Um, the, a lot of my Pokemon are just going defensive rather than specially defensive, but most of the team is is physical, so uh, it's only really the Moltres and the Colossal that I'd have to worry about uh, in that regard. So mainly, mainly physical. Especially with the Crocodile as well. Uh, the Intimidate is going to be very nice here. I am planning on leading Clefable Crocodile. That seems to be okay into most things that can happen. Uh, because if I go with Blastoise and Clefable, that can pretty hard lose to some things. Whereas I don't think Clefable Crocodile can hard lose to much, if there's anything at all. Like, it will still be a game whether I leave with, uh, when I leave with these two, regardless of what Jeremy ends up leading. So we will see how that goes. Got the weakness policy here so that if they go for a surf with the Weavile to activate the Colossal, they also activate my own Crocodile and then I'll be able to deal with some massive damage to them. And with the uh, defensive EVs as well, I can take a minus one Miracle Seed Grassy Glide and a neutral Triple Axle from the Weavile while I am in Dynamax. Because that situation amusingly came up multiple times in practice. So that is the defensive benchmarks I've gone for there. Going just max attack on the Crocodile still is a roll not in my favor to Oko Colossal with Max Quake. So I still need damage on the uh, Colossal as well, like their own Surf, their own Aqua Jets and all that. Uh, so uh, then I would still be able to get them anyway. Hopefully my weakness policy would have activated by then. And if it is, if it has activated, I can just Oko Colossal regardless. I've got just the three th th standard coverage moves uh, because Dark will hit the uh, the, the Bronzong and the Dust Noir and the Rock will hit the Moltres. So uh, pretty standard otherwise. I was thinking about Taunt maybe for the Trick Room, but I'd want those three coverage moves I want Protect. So uh, that is what it's going to be. And it is my main potential Dynamax cannon stick. They didn't bring Scrafty last time. If they don't bring Scrafty again, there's no Intimidate. That means that the Crocodile will be able to be doing the maximum amount of damage it would normally be able to do. And that would be very nice. It can Oko the Weavile immediately with a Rockfall. It will get around the Sash and just Oko it uh, that way. If I can take care of Weavile and Colossal, theoretically, even though it's exactly the same Zapdos that I brought last time, I'm still bringing it again because if I take care of Weavile and Colossal, theoretically, Zapdos has just won the game. So... I do tend to try and want to avoid going with the same set across multiple uh, matches of a draft league because I'm playing Jeremy twice now. This is the second time. I try to mix things up, but this app boss works. It does, it does its role very well. If I can just get rid of Weavile, get rid of Colossal's Max, then theoretically Zapdos has won. So uh, that is what happened in the game two in the Swiss rounds. Like I managed to just 1v1 the Azumarill because my Zapdos have won. 
Uh, could change up the item, but the Rocky Helmet still makes a lot of sense. It can still absolutely chunk the Weevil if I'm taking a Triple Axel. Uh, it can take on the Rillaboom really well, so uh, it may be a bad idea to bring the same Zapdos, but it's still doing exactly what it needs to do. So, yeah, that's going to be the team. I am feeling more confident in this game than I was going against Jeremy the first time. Like, I wasn't confident after the practice against Jeremy previously, and I wasn't confident uh, yesterday either when I was going through the initial practice, because I had some initial ideas that for changes that could happen and then they did not work in the slightest so we are going with this this seems to be pretty reasonable i want to leave copperager and executor on the bench they are here if necessary and can still do good things if necessary but the plan is clefable crocodile with zapdos and blastoise in the back and we will see how that goes and whether i can advance into the finals